Resurrection Sunday. Woohoo! It's time to get happy. Amen. Um, we're going to start in, in Proverbs chapter 28, or 28. Proverbs, that's a good one too, though. But it's going to be 18, verse 21, King James Version. We'll start there. Woo! -hoo! Okay, that was kind of weak. Proverbs, okay, wait, wait. Stop. Okay. Breathe. Proverbs 18, 21. Yeah! There you go. <laughs> it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You notice it says death comes first. <laughs> Why? We got we to gotta conquer death with life. Death comes easy, but life, we just make a, con we make a conscious effort. And we're saying, hey, okay, life, or, life is in the power of our tongue. And they that love it, and we do, shall eat the fruit thereof. In the message, it says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit, and you get the choice. Isn't that good? You choose. We choose today. Choose this day who you will serve. <laughs> Come on. We, we choose to serve the resurrected Jesus. We're going to go to John chapter 12, verse 31 in the Passion Translation. When I read that, I thought, oh, my goodness. It was what Pastor was talking about on, on, Good Fri on, on Friday, two days ago. And it says, Jesus speaking, he says, from this moment on, everything in this world is about to change. This is why I said life and death are in the power of the tongue. <laughs> from this, right now, from this moment on, come on, everything in this world is about to change. But it's going to change for our good. I said it's going to change for our good. Amen. It says, for the ruler of this dark world will be overthrown. And I will do this when I'm lifted off the ground. So he already been lifted off the ground. So what he said, come on, we qualify for that. And he says, when I am lifted off the ground and when I draw the hearts of the people to gather them to me. And he said this to indicate the way that he'd be lifted up on the cross. Let's go to John chapter 19, please. Verse 25. And we're going to be doing a lot of the uh, New Living Translation. John 19, verse 25. Let me know when you're there. Thank you. <laughs> there. So, standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, or Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. Uh, verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, John, he said to her, John, <laughs> John, he said, dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, here is your mo mother. And from, that, from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Think about that. This is the greatest gift to John to look after and care for Jesus's mother. What a gift. Right? And he trusted him with that. Let's go to Matthew 27. We're going to be bump, jumping around the Gospels because this paints such a, a beautiful picture of the resurrection. And it's Matthew 27, verse 50. And it says, Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. Not from the bottom to the top. From the bottom to the top, anybody could have did it. But this is a holy thing. From the top to the bottom... Whoa, yes. <laughs> Look at this. The earth shook. The rocks split apart. The tombs were open. Come on. Could you imagine what was going on? The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead, and they left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection and went to the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many, pe <laughs> to many people. You know, he must have freaked, they must have freaked a lot of people out. Because they know that they buried these people. And here they are again. They said, we're back. <laughs> it says they appeared to many people. Verse 54, the Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that happened. I bet you they were. They didn't know that Jesus was going to raise from the dead. They didn't know any of this power that was about that, that, that hit them. <laughs> <laughs> they said, this man was truly the son of God. So what did they see? Huh? What did they see? Over to John chapter 20, verse 1. We're, and this is all new living. John 20, verse 1. 
And it says, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved. I like that. Are you guys the ones that Jesus loved? Oh, yeah. Amen. Yes, you do. Yes, you are. <laughs> and she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. And Peter... Verse 3, and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Verse 5, he stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. And he saw and believed. He saw and believed. Verse 9, for until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must first rise from the dead. Then they went home. This is the thing that got me. They just went home. Right? I got this. I think it was uh, one of the commentaries. They said this. Notice in the manger, the swaddling clothes wrapped around Jesus were narrow bands of cloth that were wrapped around a newborn to, kept, to keep him warm and protected, to restrain its movements, and to keep him quiet. But the linen that was wrapped around Jesus' dead body could no longer restrain him. I said the linen could no longer restrain him. Come on now, you know the song, death could not hold you. <laughs> the fail tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are <laughs> the roaring, the praise of your glory. You're raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal. And now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is a kingdom. Yours is a glory. Yours is a name above all names. Come on now. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Verse 11. Now, these guys went home, but Mary Magdalene stayed. Mary Magdalene stayed. That, I got that this morning when I was reading through this. It's like, okay, this is the next verse. The boys went home, but Mary stayed, and she was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in, and she, she saw something. The other boys, they, saw, they looked in, they saw nothing. Because, but... Mary, she lingered. She lingered. She stooped and she looked and she saw two white robed angels, one sitting at the head, the other one sitting at the foot of the place where Jesus' body had been lying. And verse 13, dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied. And I don't know where they have put him. Verse 14, she turned to leave and saw some, someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Verse 15, dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? And she thought he was a gardener. Sir, if you've taken him away, tell me where he ought to put him and I will go get him. Verse 16, Mary, he, there must have been a way that Jesus said her name that just touched her heart, right? Those that loved much, received much. And he said, Mary. And she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher, master. And he said, don't cling to me, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But what? Come on. He loved her so much that he appeared to her first before going to, the, to, 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 to heaven to pour his blood out. What? He said, don't cling to me, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers. Tell them that I'm ascending to my Father, your Father, to my God, and your God. Adoption. Right there. He said, you're in the family. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I've seen the Lord. Then she gave him his message. Now we're going to jump over to Mark chapter 16. Please. And it's Mark 16, verse 1. This is painting such a nice picture of this whole thing. And it said, Saturday evening when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene and Salome and Mary, the mother of James, went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. 
Verse 2, very early Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb, and on the way there, they asked each other, who's going to roll away the stone from us, for us from the entrance of the tomb? As they arrived, they looked up and saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. And when they entered the tomb, they saw the young man, a young man clothed in white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. For you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Three words that changed our lives. He isn't here. I said, he isn't here. (laughs) He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go tell the disciples, including Peter. They did that on purpose. They said, including Peter. What? They need to bring him back into the fold. And they said, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. The women, the women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 22 uh, for the backstory for Peter. And it's Luke 22. I know a lot of you know this. Uh, verse 54. But it, it's just good. Like, this whole thing just kind of, it flows. And, and, I, and I was reading this together, and it's like, oof. So in Luke twenty two fifty four 54, it says, So they arrested Jesus, led him to the high priest's home. Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. Peter joined them there, and a servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers, but Peter denied it. Woman, I don't even know him. First one. Soon after, while someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. And he said, no, man, I am not, Peter retorted. And about an hour later, someone else insisted, this must be one of them because he's a Galilean too. And Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And in the the King James, it says, he began to curse and swear. Then he said, man, I do not know this man who you speak. But he cussed him out before he denied him. And immediately, we're back in uh, um, uh, the end of verse 60. Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. He was still speaking. And at that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Oh. Oh. Then Peter remembered that the Lord said, remember, but before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny me three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. But the look that Jesus gave him is like, man, I told you. I to- I'm praying for you. But I-, I-, I told you. But I got you. He's got us. Hallelujah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's got us. He knows what we're going to do. He knows what we've done. He knows what we're going to do. But he said, listen, I got you. Oh, Luke 24, verse 13, please. New living. Oh, wow. Mm Mm-hmm. We've all done it. We've denied him. Come on. Are you a Christian? Well, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, I just, uh, you know, I talk to groups of people. Praise the Lord. Luke 24, 13, that same day, two of Jesus' followers are walking into the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. Okay, they went for long walks, right? Come on. They got their steps in. (laughs) Seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. How many times have we been walking down the street and some stranger comes up to us and starts talking? You don't know. You don't know. It says Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. So we don't, that's why it's it's good to be good to people. I said it's good to be good to people because you don't know who it is you're talking to. (laughs) And he asked him, what are you discussing so intently as you walked along? And so they 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 repeated what they were saying to him, but we're going to jump up to verse 28. 
And it says, by this time, they were nearing Emmaus at the end of their journey. And Jesus acted as if he was going to go on. Verse 29, but they begged him, stay the night with us since it's getting late. So he went home with them. And as they sat down to eat, he took bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it and he gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were open. When you open up this book, the bread of life, expect your eyes to be opened. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly their eyes are open and they recognized him. And at that moment he disappeared. Why? Because they needed to stay in faith. Not by what you see. It's by what you believe. That, but they're 32. Then they said to us, each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures? Come on, restored intimacy. And, you know, that's where he wants to get us to, that our hearts are just burning toward Jesus. Our hearts are burning towards you. Hallelujah. And within an hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. They found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered them, who said, the Lord has really risen, and he appeared to Peter. Of all people, do you know what Peter did? Do you have any idea? Do you know what he's done? They do. Praise the Lord. And come on, God knows a way now too. And he still appears to us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This I know. Mark 16, verse 9, New Living. This made me shake my head a little bit. Because, but, and, and we've all done this. After verse 9, Mark 16, verse 9. After Jesus arose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene, uh, the woman whom he cast out seven demons. She went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she seen him, they did not believe her. They didn't believe it. They chose not to. And verse 12, afterward, he appeared to, in a different form to two of his followers, which we just read about, who were walking from Jerusalem to, to the country. They rushed back to tell the others. No one believed them either. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together, and he rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief. They chose. And they said, no, we're not going to believe this. Woman. They chose not to believe. And it says, because they refused to believe on those who had seen him after he had risen and <laughs> been raised from the dead, they chose to believe not. John 20, verse 18. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind him, locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among, come on, could you imagine? You locked the doors. And then all of a sudden, how you doing? <laughs> What's up? Do y'all miss me? <laughs> I think it's awesome. Come on. We should be expecting some suddenlies anytime. Anytime. Yep. Come on. The, the praise and worship has been so glorious. And, and it's just like, okay, you know what? Anytime. Anytime. Mm -hmm. And it says, suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And as he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. And they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. But they didn't believe. But they were filled with joy when they saw. <laughs> People want to get all over Thomas, but... Uh... <laughs> come on now again he said peace be with you as the father has sent me i'm sending you and then, i love this he breathed on them and said receive the holy spirit and what pastor was talking about on friday the whole premise of friday was forgiveness and this here it is like okay you know what he says in verse 23 if you forgive anyone's sins they are forgiven what power we have been given to forgive sins from people that have wronged us, we can release them and let them go. Right? Whew. He says, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not, they are not. So, come on. We've run into so many people that have been sick in the hospital, and they said, I will never forgive dot, dot, dot for what they did to me. I will go to my grave not forgiven, bot, bot, bot. We have the power to forgive. And the people that were sick and, and, and dealing with this unforgiveness, when they made the decision to forgive, 
instantly healed. Instantly healed. That's the power of forgiveness. 24. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. And they told him, we've seen the Lord. And he replied, I won't believe it. Unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into, oh, I wouldn't want to do that. He said, unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, place my hands into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were standing <laughs> together. And this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked and suddenly as before, come on, he keeps on appearing when the doors are locked. <laughs> Lock your doors. <laughs> Suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you. Every time he shows up, it's either peace or do not be, you know, do not fear. Well, there's no fear, there's peace, right? He said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Believe. He said, my Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed, then Jesus told him, you believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believed without seeing me. Mark 16, verse 15, King James. He gave him some, some orders now. And they're for us too. Mark 16, verse 15. He said unto them, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. I like this. In my name, he gave us the power of his name. They shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. Doc Barkley always should, used to say, if you used to cuss, you get saved, you're going to speak with another tongue. <laughs> you're not going to speak with that old tongue anymore, but he'll give you a new tongue. And he said, they'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We just lay the hands on. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth. They believe now, right? Preaching everywhere, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord is still in that business today. He will work with and confirm the word spoken with signs following, but you got to speak the word. And that, we do that. We do that. Luke 24, verse 49. Jesus said, and now I will send the Holy Spirit. Just as my father had promised, God does not lie. But to stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 1, New Living. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, and after giving his chosen disciples further instructions through the Holy Spirit, during the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the, the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he actually was alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God, and once when he was eating with them, he was eating with them, the, you know, there's, I think it's in John, it says that he was barbecuing, broiling some fish. <laughs> Yes, we will be barbecuing up in heaven. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, we'll be smoking. The charcoal will be going. We will be, come on now. <laughs> we'll be slapping meat. Praise the Lord. It says, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jer Jerusalem until the Father sends the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water. In just a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 11, please. I like this. He said you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But if the Spirit of him that raised Je up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he does, and he does, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make it alive your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. That's resurrection power on Resurrection Sunday. We got that. Hallelujah. Joanne, please come. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, King James. It says, come now. 
Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. What? Though they be red like crimson, they should be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. You'll wear the good of the land. 1 John verse 1. Or 1 John 1, uh, verse 7. If you walk in the light as he was in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, his son, mm, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins. If he's faithful and just to forgive us, can you be faithful and just to forgive yourself? Can you forgive yourself? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, please. Mm. And it says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. We're accepted. So forgive yourself. You're accepted today. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Through his blood, we get the forgiveness to come. According to the riches of his grace, the message says it this way. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, he, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people. We're free. Free to forgive, free to live. Free from the penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds. Not just barely free either, but abundantly free. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.